here in Arlington. Dallas takes over at their own 21 yard line. We have some movement on. Five yard penalty, first down. Chris, let's go back to the 73, working against Jordan Davis as Dak scrambled as they interpreted it on the field. A separation as the defender was pulling away. Thus, the flag was picked up after the conversation. So that's the details behind that. That's a pass complete to C.D. Lamb. Makes up the penalty yardage on the first snap of this drive. And the ball's at the 22. It really is fun to watch Dak now with this West Coast offense. The West Coast offense is all about footwork. Oh, and so when he hits that back foot, he is looking one, two, and if it's not there, he's out of there. Looking, 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 and now getting out of there. As he's chased, fires downfield. Good play by Slay to knock away the pass from Brandon Cooks as it falls incomplete. Nolan Smith, the first round pick, was in there bringing pressure for the Eagles. And Slay, I'm trying hard not to say Darius <laughs> in this process, but he's over there working on Cooks. And we all know about the speed of Cooks down the field, and yet there is Slay who's been doing this for a long time, right on the money again. 11 years in the league, came over in the trade from the Lions. He was in Detroit for the first seven years. He's that Eagles third down defense. A conversion rate from Dallas was good. Picked up third downs on the first drive. And got one here on the second to CeeDee Lamb to the 49 yard line. That's a gain of 27. And a couple of big shots to Lamb already. Every time you watch CD, he can be very deliberate until he gets to the break point, and then he's very sharp. He just sort of jogs his way off, and then once he gets you to make a bold step one way, that time Bradley Roby, now he's got you on your heels and off to the race as he goes. 26 on that one. Got a pair of those already in this first quarter. From the 48, it is Dowdle with the run. Across midfield, fourth year back out of South Carolina, who is the number two back to Tony Pollard, who's taken most of the work back there. And this is going to be an interesting night for Sean Desai, trying to get this Eagles defense going, Chris. It's been a tough last two games. Well, they got to turn it back into their style of play, right? With the Cowboys having the lead, both teams have tremendous pass rushers. They really do. And so the Cowboys, though, with the lead, they're going to be a little more comfortable at this point and they can run the football, they can play a balanced game here. So both these teams want to take advantage with their pass rushes. Pollard back in, inside for about six yards to the 44-yard line. You talked about this defense and what Sean Desai is dealing with. It's a very different-looking set of characters on the back end as we've gone through this year for Philly. It, it really is, and the two corners are still there, James Bradbury and Darius Slay. But everything else has changed. Avante Maddox was the slot guy. They brought Kevin Byard in here. Uh, Sidney Brown's a rookie that's come over. They're top five tacklers on this defense from a year ago. They're all gone. Be a free agency. Third and two. Dak pumps Bruce high and incomplete for Michael Gallup. Decision time. It's fourth and two at the Eagles 44. Mike McCarthy's working off the play sheet. And going to go for this one. So you can play at home with Dak Prescott here. He's going to hit that back foot. He's got a one. He's got a two. And if he doesn't like it, as soon as he looks to that second guy, he is going to be off in some direction here. So watch. Play along. Watch that footwork. We'll continue to run inside. Pollard shifting direction. Got the first down. Nifty run by Tony Pollard. To the 40, and it's a fourth down conversion for Dallas. And it's what happens sometimes if you get convinced, like I was, that they were going to throw there. Watch Jalen Carter right there make an inside move. The minute he does that, you leave the gap open, and there you go for a huge conversion. 20, 20. Cowboys already 120 yards in this opening quarter. Pollard adds to it. On the run to the 23-yard line. Flag down, though. Two of them. As that hole opened up for what would have been a gain of 17. Holding. Offense number 78. 10-yard penalty. First down. It's the right tackle, Terrence Steele. And Fletcher Cox 
did three pirouettes to make sure the officials saw it. Watch him right here. As soon as the hold happens, there it is. That one, two. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. It's like he's in the shot put circle. Yeah. Been around for more than a minute, 12 years in the league. Brandon Graham, 14 years. His veterans on that defensive front. This pass is deflected in there by that veteran defender. An incomplete. It'll set up second and long. It's really something, isn't it, that two of the old heads are still the ones that are getting it done. Fletcher Cox just two and a half sacks this year, but he has 12 quarterback hits. That is second on the team. Only Josh Sweat has more, so the older guy inside just still making plays and so much the leader of that defensive line. Down roll. Reed Blankenship up from his safety spot to make a good play. Blankenship stepped into the lineup late last year and has become a significant part of this team as we've gone through this year, the leading tackler for Philly. Yeah, so you need seven now. You, you need seven yards to long for... Aubrey is right there at that 58 yard mark. So Mike McCarthy knows what he's looking for here. So the Eagles will have to protect against the first down and they'll try to take advantage with something inside. CD Lamb there against Eli Ricks. Don't be surprised. It's in the slot at the bottom of the screen. Prescott climbs the pocket, throws incomplete. It was short, but Slay may have had too many hands on Michael Gallup. This will be the seventh accepted penalty in this first quarter. Fourth on the Eagles. Pass interference, defense number two. The ball replaces from the foul. Automatic first down. It's going to be a stop route at the top end of this thing. Slay is one of those veteran guys who gets away with that every once in a while at that time. There wasn't a lot there. No. <laughs> okay. Fourth penalty on Philadelphia in this opening quarter. Three on Dallas. Down from the 32. Prescott. Another flag down as Dak takes off. Got a first down and more. Sliding down at the 15-yard line. Slid into Zach Cunningham. He was back in the Eagles lineup after being out last week. Holding. Offense number 73. 10-yard penalty. First down. On Tyler Smith. And it's being called tight here to establish the tone early on. And the Philadelphia Eagles defensive line apparently has trained in how to help officials here. Another pirouette on the tail end of this one. Arms up, there you go, help my cause. As Dak went running by him, he went running for the officials to get the call. That Dallas-Seattle Thursday night game in here, last game for the Cowboys, full of flags as well. First and 20, Prescott high throw off the hands of Jake Ferguson. And incomplete with Cunningham, the linebacker there in coverage. With a minute four left here in this first quarter. Second drive of the game for Dallas. A TD on the opening one to CD. Yeah, it's something the way that these defensive tackles for the Philadelphia Eagles have made such an impact that they, the Cowboys really are less concerned about the edge pressure. And one of the main reasons is that Jalen Carter, their first round draft pick, has really become a bit of a force inside. 98 game wrecker in there. Prescott from the pocket, knocked down. Nicholas Morrow, the linebacker, getting in the way, getting in the lane. And it's third and 20 for Dallas from the 42. And there's a mini celebration going on in Philadelphia because this is how the 49ers really sort of tore up the Eagles defense, trying to protect this middle part of the field. And yet here they go. Extend, get your hands on the ball, and that's a big play, and that's a confidence boost for Philadelphia. 
and his status this year. Been some ups and downs. Here's the good news. Nine touchdown passes of the big balls, 20 or more downfield, and the rushing touchdowns. But one of the problems you saw in that opening drive, 15 turnovers, five fumbles lost, career high. Overall, Dr. Sirianni, though, feels pretty good about where it's going. 27-3 in the last 30 regular season games. Well, the eighth quarterback to have a stretch like that. But there's the fumble earlier on and the turnover that turned into three points. But, Chris, you said to me right at the break there, they're willing to run him here. See you tonight. Yeah, already. Drop back here and get it to Goddard. And tight end screen. And the power of Goddard with Kelsey pushing the pile as well for a gain of a little more than five. And I really feel like the Philadelphia Eagles, despite the fact that they're down 10 here, they can be great running the football. They can be great. This offensive line is arguably the best that there is in all of football. So as tremendous as Jalen Hurts has been in these receivers, sometimes it's that front five. It's those guys up there that can dominate games and easily lead to a comeback here. Four times for 29 yards already. DeAndre Swift has a couple to that. Well, third down as we begin the second quarter. Dallas scores on both of their drives. Cowboys 10, Eagles nothing after one. Celebrate the holidays at the movies with the three. Melissa, Chris, and I will be in L.A. And Todd Blackledge, Noah Eagle, and Catherine Tappan will join you in Pittsburgh for that first game two days before Christmas. Third and two. Hurts to throw. Goddard was covered to Devontae Smith incomplete. Trying to pick it up in the air. Malik Hooker with the hit on Smith. And the Eagles will kick it away. On the outside, you've got Devontae Smith, who really has been the hot receiver here as of late. A little double move. So many times what the Cowboys are known for is they will try to undercut those receivers. They're trying to take advantage. But that time it really was Demarcus Lawrence that saved the day. I think the first option there was a run. Lawrence took it away. So Braden Mann will come on. The three and out for the Eagles. Mann who replaced Aaron Sipos week, Sipos week three as the Philadelphia punter has done a nice job. The dangerous Turpin back deep. It's going to be a throw and wide open for the completion is Alameda Zacchaeus to the 40 and the 38 yard line. So the Eagles go with the trick play. Michael Clay, their special teams coordinator, had one up his sleeves. The completion by Braden Mann. It's one of the problems when you put a wide receiver out there as the gunner. He didn't have a lot of experience in trying to cover anybody, and you can see just how wide open Zacchaeus was. That is some gutsy call. But you go into a place like Dallas in this stadium, all the points they're scoring, you have to strike, and they struck there. Man was one of two passing last year for the Jets for 17 yards. Huge play there. Gain of 28. DeAndre Swift the back. He's brought down by Osa Odigizua in the backfield for the loss of three. Uh, O.C. Odigazuwa has had a fantastic year. Only three sacks to show, okay? I'm going to admit that. But he doesn't get to play on passing downs. They have so many good pass rushers here. This guy has continued to make play after play. You saw him there with the quickness. Back door, runs through, ends up with a big play right after that momentum shift. Officially loss of four. Has five options. And Smith, Devontae holds on to this one at the 34 yard line, stuck there by Duran Bland, Mr. Pick Six. It really has become Jalen Hurts' team, though. And as we were talking with Mike McCarthy about it and say, all right, key moments, comes up in the game, what are you expecting? What are you going to do? Because let me tell you something. So Jalen Hurts is the guy that's going to have the ball. And you saw it on that last one. It was Demarcus Lawrence who saved it. And they threw the pass, but clearly they want Jalen Hurts to be the guy in the key moments. Third and five, Gainwell with the block, gives Hurts time for A.J. Couldn't bring it in. Turning late was Brown. J. Ron cursed the coverage. Eagles will come out to try a long field goal. 
I tell you, that was some throw right there. Now, these are the hardest catches to make because you're flipping your head all the way around. But as far as a throw, can't ask for better than that. We saw Aubrey nail a 60-yarder. Jake Elliott has an Eagles franchise record of six field goals from 50-plus this year. This is 52. Great man puts it down, and Elliott sneaks it in the right side. So give the special teams those three points. The pass by man kept the drive alive. Elliott bangs the three. Seven point game. Just another one with Dallas and Philly. You're representing Team USA there. Gabby Thomas, two-time Olympic medalist, silver and bronze in Tokyo, track star. Who went to Harvard and is at Texas where she got her graduate degree. One of the great stories of Team USA. Could be one of the stars of the team when we see you from Paris this summer. Cowboys at 25, Chris. Yeah, here comes Dak Prescott. We know as a child that Peyton Manning was his favorite player. And if you love Peyton, you love him. Think of it as on your mark, get set, go. But that's sort of the sequencing they're using here in Dallas. From the 25, Dattle with the run for a gain of two. So the Cowboys are on on Thanksgiving. And Everybody's watching and then they're on the Thursday night game and now people online start talking about this whole here We go here. We go thing. It's taken on a life of its own It, it really has but the importance of it besides being kind of funny you know, <laughs> when you listen to it, you know it, it is that They weren't very good at the line of scrimmage last year They had a lot of penalties so they tried to come up with a sequence that could help everybody get on the same page in particular the offensive line 22, Dak throwing in the middle, there's Ferguson into Eagles territory at the 45. Jake Ferguson, the tight end for 27. There is a star in the making in Dallas and Jake Ferguson. This guy is just one of those great, gritty, tight end, Jason Witness kind of guys that just loves all the action in the middle of the field. And he is a bit of the enforcer for this offense. Whenever somebody goes after one of his teammates, everybody knows 87's coming. And a concern for the Eagles, their safety, their leading tackler, Reed Blankenship, went down at the end of that play, and the athletic training staff is going to walk him off for a closer look. Eagles only dressed three true safeties in Blankenship, Byard, and Sidney Brown, the rookie out of Illinois. There you see the hit. I tell you, the other thing that does, Mike, is that Kevin Byard, one of the safeties, is sort of the dime guy tonight, which means he's going to be a little more involved in coverage. He made that big play on third down before, but now they're going to probably have to flip him back to safety along with Sidney Brown, the rookie. So it's going to take away some of their coverage packages the rest of the way. You also saw 53, Shaquille Leonard, former Colt. Making his Eagles debut on this drive. It's a run inside. For about a gain of four yards with Dowdle to the 41 yard line. It'll be second and six for this Dallas offense. 25 plays, 156 yards. There's Leonard. His decision came down to Dallas or Philly. And really, his relationship with Nick Sirianni is a huge reason why he ends up continuing his career with the Eagles. This guy was an all-pro for four straight years and was a, really a takeaway machine at Indy. I'm hoping they get some of the same here. Yeah! Here we go! I think we CD Lamb, the loop to the ocean. Prescott will throw to Dowdle. On the side, Dowdle very close to that first down. Mark him over at the 35-yard line, which would give him the first down. One of the things you're seeing out of Dallas, Mike, is that they are calling more deep shots. A little skirmish in there, and that's no big deal. But more deep shots. Mike McCarthy has confidence now in calling those deep pass plays. There was one on there because he now trusts Dak Prescott. If it's not there, check it down. Check it down for a first down right there. Five inside run with Dowdle. Look at him weaving his way for nine. Byard making a tackle with his Eagle defense, Melissa. 
Yeah, Mike, you were talking about Shaquille Leonard. He told me that his relationship with Nick Sirianni is 100% the reason he chose to come to the Eagles. He said Sirianni would FaceTime him every day, and knowing Shaq's competitive nature, he would show him over his shoulder in his office this picture, the Eagles on the podium after last year's NFC Championship game. And Shaq told me, for a guy who's only played in three playoff games, that's my dream. They need his ability, too. He played nine games for the Colts. A little pop pass to Lamb. On the edge, C.D. Lamb. Slay takes him out of bounds at the 16-yard line. But again, they'll move the chains. Another first down for Dallas. And it's really a tremendous play because anytime that Lamb goes across, now you can use the back as a lead blocker on the outside. Tony Pollard, that time, able to get out on the edge. And we are seeing some of this misdirection now really come into play and slow down, in particular, the pass rush of the Eagles. The 16 yard line. Good run Pollard to the nine. And there you heard a little bit of why here we go has some real meaning. Yeah, and what the meaning is when he goes, yeah, here we go, is shut up. So when he is out there, he's trying to communicate. And yeah, here we go means, all right, everybody shut up at this point. We've said all we're going to say. Let's get on with the snap count. Like you said, on your mark, get set. Here they go. That's it. Yeah, here we go. Inside the 10. Pollard. Cut back to the 7. Important couple of downs coming up for this Philadelphia defense. We approach the halfway mark of this second quarter. Sirianni's team lost to San Francisco last week, trying to avoid back-to-back -back losses, trying to keep the Cowboys from tying them atop the division. Of course, everybody knew these were the two games on the schedule, right? You go San Francisco back to on the road with Dallas. If they could split those two somehow, it'd be quite the accomplishment. Third and one, Dak keeping. And he's got the first down at the four. Sidney Brown, the rookie, tries to pull the ball away. Well, there's an old guy over there named Zach Martin, who everybody says is getting a little bit older now. But whenever they need a yard, it just feels like Zach Martin is just going to be a part of that mix. And if I were Dak Prescott, I'd feel pretty good about going right there. First and goal for the Cowboys. Yeah, here we go. Inside the five, there is Pollard to the goal line, brought down just short. Hassan Reddick was there for the hit. But they're knocking on the door. Yeah, and you know, Ezekiel Elliott was the guy here forever that made all of that happen, right? And yet now we're seeing a little bit more of a balanced running attack with Dowdle and Pollard, both of them in there. But I was waiting for one of these offensive lines to take over it, and so far it looks like it's been Dallas. Hunter Lipke, the fullback, is in. Here we go. Think... Fake to Dowdle, to Ferguson. Good defensive play by Nicholas Morrow. As they try to get to the tight end in the end zone. Linebackers took a bit of heat over the last week with San Francisco and their play in the middle of the field, but so far Nicholas Morrow has been fantastic in this one. Former Bear and Raider comes up with the play there. Dallas has been successful with the sneak. They'll turn and hand. It's Dowdle. Is he in? They run in from the side. Spot the ball short. I don't think so. So if it's Philly, you know what's coming. Dak has been successful on a couple of sneaks already. Let's take a peek at the replay. I think that is right there. Was that Carter? That was. There's Dowdle. Chris, you can't see the ball, but you see where he had the ball and where his head ends up on the pile there. And Mike McCarthy has brought down the red challenge flag in front of the official. 
Carl Johnson, the line judge, former head of officiating for the league, back on the Dallas field now. He's challenging the ruling on the field, but the runner was short of the goal line. Timeout. All right, let's see if there is something conclusive in that mass of humanity down at the goal line. We'll take a peek at every possible look. Looks like he's in, but can you be sure? Answer to come. Back in Arlington, and here's the result of the review. After reviewing the play, the runner did, in fact, get in the ball beyond the goal line for a touchdown. Dallas will not be charged. So it is a touchdown. There you see, as we were looking, you could just see the laces in the ball breaking the plane clearly and in the end zone with no body part down on the back end. And they stitch the replays together, and you can see it. And one last look from that side as Rico Dowdle gets credit for the touchdown to make it 16 to 3 and Brandon Aubrey adds the extra point. And the Dallas Cowboys are three drives and three scores and on top 17 to 3. We're back in Arlington in 30 seconds after this from AWS. Dallas Cowboys continue Chris to be a red-hot offensive team here at home. They average over 40 points a game undefeated here at AT&T Stadium, and they're on top 17-3 here in the second. Yeah, it was the only question, really, about the Cowboys. We knew how hot they were. We knew that Dak Prescott had moved into almost the lead position with the MVP voting and all the different things. But you had to see it against a top-quality team, and so far it's just continued. Austin Scott will let it go. Philly takes over the 25. It's considered the league's most prestigious honor. The Walter Payton NFL Man of the Year Award recognizing players whose passion impact lives extends beyond the game. Terrific nominees for these teams. Lane Johnson for Philadelphia. Demarcus Lawrence from Dallas. NFL Man of the Year gets announced at NFL Honors on the Thursday of Super Bowl week, February 8th. If you've been watching games all day, you've been hearing about the nominees. It's really such a great honor and award. And those two men have done a lot to earn their team nominations. He was down 14. Kenneth Gainwell inside run for seven. Melissa. Yeah, Mike, this year Lane Johnson has been hosting Gold Star families who have lost loved ones in military action through the Travis Mannion Foundation, providing these families the opportunity to exchange stories and experiences. And here in Dallas, Demarcus Lawrence told me his favorite initiative is Big Thought, which empowers kids by providing clothing and shoes to support their needs outside of school. A.J. Brown here, Melissa, with the catch. And a first down, much needed for Philadelphia. Out to the 45-yard line. Don't want to get past what Melissa was talking about there and the huge impact that those guys have had and how deserving, how emotional it was, especially on the Philly side, when Lane Johnson was named the nominee. It was one of the really cool things I've seen all year, Jason Kelsey basically presenting to Lane Johnson. But more than that, what Lane Johnson meant to Jason Kelsey and their partnership over the past decade. It was really, really a cool moment. You see those big guys get teared up, man. <laughs> you know something's happening out there. The 46 sends Gainwell in motion. There goes Hertz taking off. Kelsey couldn't get the block, but Hertz gets a good gain of eight yards on that one. His third run of the game. Yeah, and it's one of the interesting things now. We're seeing the Eagles doing a little bit of motion. They're not a big motion team. And in part in this game, because the Dallas Cowboys, one of the best defenses at disguising man zone looks against motion. A little adjustment of the ball there. But there are almost no teams that do as many different things in game during the course of a motion by an offense as do the Dallas Cowboys. That Dan Quinn really has come up with a pretty unique system here, and part of the reason they've been so good. Well, inside, first down to the 41-yard line. J. Ron Kirst on the tackle. You talk about Dan Quinn, five years with Atlanta as the head coach, assistant coach of the year. Really turned around this Dallas defense from, man, the Cowboys can't stop anybody to now the Cowboys take it away from people all the time. Uh, they really do, and, and their disguises in the defense have just been second to none. And I'm, I'm going to say one more thing. Al Harris, the secondary coach, 
<laughs> Nick Sirianni basically wanted us to build him up to get him a defensive <laughs> coordinator job to get him out of Dallas. That's how good a job he thinks he's doing. That was so funny. Our visit with the Eagles coach this week on first and ten. Hurts going to take off. Gainwell blocking. Jalen's got nothing there. She's going to shut it down. Eagles sideline wanted a flag on the contact. Jalen's been uh, beat up a little bit here this year. The knee was bothering him. Came out for five plays to be evaluated for a concussion last week. They came right back in the game. Mike, here's what I think is a mistake, though. As a quarterback, when you're going to run the football, that's fine. That's good. But keep it in a passing position because otherwise those defensive backs are going to come flying up when they see you with it tucked under your arm. We saw that there as Bell came down on Hurts. You understand why the Eagles' sideline was angry that no flag was thrown on that one. Second and 11. Here comes the pressure. It's picked up for A.J. Brown. Back shoulder got it at the 19-yard line. Big man, strong hands, gain of 23 to A.J. That is a world-class battle going on on the outside. A.J. Brown has been incredible this season. Over 1,100 yards receiving, and you saw Stephon Gilmore win the first battle on a back shoulder. Now it's one to one. Going quick, going to Goddard on the edge. Open field tackle by Jerron Bland. So not just those uh, gambling pick sixes. Remember, last week against Seattle, Bland was picked on a lot in the first half. Yeah, but he's been picking on offense <laughs> all season long. He leads the NFL with eight interceptions, an NFL record, five pick sixes, NFC Defensive Player of the Month in November. He has been sensational. Right at the two-minute warning, and play not in before. So stop it here at the two. Eagles get the ball to start the second half. Really need some points here. They prefer a touchdown. Eagles Cowboys seen it about 125 times this one just like a lot of the others comments after the buffalo 20 to 17 win kansas city marie and the guys will have that coming up on the toyota halftime here's second and 11 for the eagles trailing by 14 hurts parsons pressure parsons with the sack micah parsons took on two and got there Timeout taken. Dallas timeout. This guy's relentless. Doesn't matter. Flu-like symptoms. Who cares? He's just going to come ripping off the edge. A guy with that kind of speed and one of the most athletic tackles trying to hang on. He does, but it doesn't matter. When you see Micah Parsons with that kind of head start, he can just push his way straight back to the quarterback. Phenomenal battle right there. And there you go. Players with 12 plus sacks in each of their first three NFL seasons. There's two. Pretty good company. Micah Parsons, that was now 12 and a half sacks of the year. And remember, Reggie White started his professional career in the USFL. So you can say no player since the sack became an official stat in the early 80s came right from college and had three dozen plus sack years, except for that guy. 11. From Penn State, grew up in Harrisburg. Goes to Sixers games in a Sixers jersey. Loves the Phillies. He's not popular with Eagles fans right now. Right down here is the guy. Anytime they're down in this end of the field, A.J. Brown. Pressure on. Prescott got it out, but the pressure gets the deflection. And the pass is incomplete. Closing in, and John Hussey, the referee, gets right between Brown and Gilmore as they continue their constant conversation after each play. Field goal attempt coming for Philly. It's a great job. They're going to bring inside pressure right here so that the tackle has to jump down there in Jordan Mailata. So a free swing there for Lawrence. Some battle on the outside. These are really top end players. Jake Elliott from 44. That's going right, just sneaks it in. Not the best ball he's hit, but he's made 23 and 25 field goals this year. The Dallas lead is 11. They've got the ball back. Some anxious moments, but he sneaks it in. <laughs> the 
team go? Do you watch Home Alone every year? Oh my gosh, yes. Yeah, it's every year. Best. Right? You have to. Best. No doubt. Touchback with Turpin here. The movie came out in 1990, which really makes you feel old when you when you hear that. Everything uh, makes me feel old. <laughs> Ditto. Um, this has been impressive from Dallas, 17-6, and this drive could go a long way to how that second half is going to play out here. Yeah, and one of the things that I really wanted to watch during the course of the game was who was winning the physical battle up front. Two tremendous offensive lines and defensive lines. I have to say, so far, the Dallas Cowboys offensive line has been better. They've been more dominant, or at least been given more opportunity. Take Prescott here, this two-minute drill to Tony Pollard, slung out of bounds by Zach Cunningham. What it all means here tonight, a winner of time, the Eagles clinch a playoff spot. They'll be the first to do so. But Dallas trying to get to a tie at 10-3 and three atop the NFC East. But again, we reiterate. The way it plays out, if Philly wins out, even with a loss tonight, they win the division. Dallas is going to have a better division record at the end of the night if they win, but if the Eagles win their last four, they win the division. Prescott fires, sideline, good throw. That's Michael Gallup. Marked out of bounds right around that first down. Mark Reed's got it at the 46. Just to sum it up very quickly, the Philadelphia Eagles should win this division. Based on the schedule ahead of both of these teams, they should win it. Clock keeps rolling, buck 22. Whoa. Prescott hit as he was about to throw by Hassan Reddick off the edge for his 10th sack of the season. You're going to see Terrence Steele kind of take a swing and miss against Reddick. He's going to hit that punch, and Reddick's going to go right around him and get up just high enough. If he had not gotten up to that thigh level, that would have been a foul on Reddick. Great play. For a sack of Prescott here tonight. Second and 16. He will throw it complete to Lamb, trying to get out of bounds. And he will be ruled getting out of bounds, and the clock stops with 51 seconds remaining. That was close. That was almost a forward momentum call right there because CD went backwards just a bit. And those calls are getting bigger and bigger here as time goes on. Take a look at the very tail end of this. If the forward momentum was stopped and he's pushed backwards out of bounds, which you could definitely make an argument there. And the Eagles sideline is trying to influence that. This is third and six. Prescott's got some time here. Rips it to the right flag down as the catch is made by Brandon Cooks on the sideline. And the flag came in as the official watching that matchup saw something. Face mask? That gesture was with his hand from the field judge, Anthony Fleming, back there. 44 seconds, Dallas with two timeouts. There are two fouls on the play, both by the same player. Pass interference, defense, number 22. Also, while committing that act of pass interference, face mask, personal foul, defense number 22. By rule, both those fouls shall be enforced. Whoa. Automatic, first down. Let's bring in Terry McCauley, our three-time Super Bowl referee, our rules analyst. Explain why, Terry, both get counted here. It is one of the rare cases where a team can penal get penalized twice on the same play. If, if the pass interference is also a personal foul, then you penalize at the spot of the foul for for the pass interference, and you add 15 yards to that for the personal foul. So, so it was the face mask that was actually the interference. Correct. Well, because of the face mask, we will also enforce an additional 15 yards from the spot of the foul. Thanks, Terry. First down. That's why you're the best. So it'll take it into field goal range here for the Cowboys to the 35-yard line. Very, very rare that, that, that two for one and both count, even though there was a catch on that play by Cooks. Very much a game here if the Eagles can get out of this. They cannot give up a touchdown here. Yeah. Here we go. Right there. Prescott stepping up. 
taking off and went down to the 31 yard line. Tag there by Bradley Roby. Dallas going to take a timeout. Four second down, 36 seconds to go here in Arlington. Update on Eagles safety Reed Blankenship, who we saw suffered this hit a few moments ago. As a result, he is currently back in the locker room being evaluated for a concussion, Mike. And yeah, Melissa, such a key part of this Philadelphia defense. He's right up there with the most snaps played, along with James Bradbury and Darius Slay. Leading tackler, tied for the lead in interceptions. He's a key part. And the signal caller on the back end. Second and six for Dallas. One timeout left. Pressure on. And as he throws to the tenth consecutive drive, excluding kneel downs, that the Eagles have given up points. Remember, San Francisco got on a great roll at the end of the game and scored on six consecutive drives on Fletcher Cox of the Eagles defense. And the Dallas drives tonight. Touchdown, field goal, touchdown. And that touchdown to Gallup. And the Eagles defense team looks tired to me or lethargic or something. They have had a lot of snaps over the last three and a half games. Yeah, before the San Francisco game where they gave a 42, that's the second time Aubrey has hit the crossbar on a kickoff. It's two. Even John Hussey had a laugh about that. I guess he's accurate. Jeez. Chris, you bring up a great point because San Francisco 42 points in the last game, but that Buffalo game 37 34, they won, went all the way to the end of overtime for the most part. So it's been a lot and they've given up a lot. They've been averaging about 80 plays a game, and that is a lot. And they're right on pace for that same sort of average here. And they just don't look like they have the pop that the Dallas Cowboys have here. I, you know, maybe the Cowboys are just that good. Draw with DeAndre Swift. We haven't seen as much of, and he's tripped up in the open field by Deron Bland. With 13 seconds left, Nick Sirianni will take a timeout. Could that be a function of the schedule and the brutal run that they've had with Dallas in the off week, Kansas City, Buffalo, San Francisco, and now the Cowboys? I don't think there's any question that it's had an impact. Um, because really, we're, one of the things you'd say was, well, you know, Jalen Hurts hurt his knee and he wasn't running as much, so the offense and Dallas Goddard was out. And so, yeah, we've got some excuses. But Goddard's back, Jalen's been running tonight, and it still is two field goals. Now, Dallas's defense is really good, and it's possible that this team is really growing into something now. The Cowboys. It really is, yes. That we knew they had the defense, but the offense now seems to really be engaged in this West Coast production with Mike McCarthy. Well, that's a second. A sideline shot. AJ Brown feet down. Yes. Man, he is so good. Strong, physical, and great hand eye. At the 43, the conversation with the officials, and they do say catch on the field. Oof. Nope. There you go. There you go. That's the OC. That'll come back. Yep. So on the line there. See, in the last two minutes, everything gets reviewed in the booth. The ruling on the field is an incomplete pass. Second down. Yeah, they're able to knock it out quick. We're down to nine seconds left. It's one of my favorite changes with officiating. Like they know, right? New York's watching it. They know his toes on there. Just tell them. Let's go. Keep playing. Keep playing. Mike McCarthy comes off the operating table with that appendectomy, and he has been smoking with his play calling here tonight. He was worried about missing that couple of days there for putting together the game plan. That, and that was there with Brian Schottheimer, the offensive coordinator, with the call sheet. So important to the play caller to get ready for the game. The run with Gainwell to the 41, and the Eagles going to take it into the locker room and regroup because they get the ball to start the second half. What a half for a Cowboy offense that is on fire. 24 points, 247 yards in that first half, and an 18-point lead over the Eagles. Here's Melissa Stark. Mike, four drops.